I'm here in Palo Alto, California with Adivya Nag, who is the co-founder of Stem Cell Theragnostics. Uh, so let's start with the word theragnostics. What, what does that mean? So theragnostics is kind of the combination of therapeutics and diagnostics. And so what do you, what do you guys do? What, what, is, what is Stem Cell Theragnostics' mission? So we created technology to take skin cells, turn them into stem cells, and then we could turn those stem cells into any cell of the body. We chose to turn them into beating heart cells on a dish. And, and you can take those uh, stem cells on the dish and you can do clinical trials on those uh, cells in a dish. That's right. So the really cool part about our technology is we can take these, heart, these skin cells from any patient in the United States, or in the world actually, and their heart cells will actually contain all the same genetic and ethnic information as the patient. So what we es essentially have is a clinical trial because we have thousands of patients worth of cells on these dishes where we can test drugs on them, um, to see whether or not, one, they're fatal for the heart, or two, whether or not they actually have the intended effects. And you, but the ultimate, the, even more beyond that, you can, uh, is when you have a heart attack or something happens to your heart, uh, your heart gets damaged. And the, the goal or the hope is that eventually you'll be able to take these uh, stem cells, heart stem cells, and inject them back into the heart? That's right. So that's the therapeutic aspect. Um, after heart attack, several of your heart cells die, and currently your body has no way of actually regenerating those heart cells. So what we can do is easily take your skin cells, turn them into your own beating heart cells, and then inject them back into the heart to repair functionality. And so eventually to do this, you're going to have to do clinical trials at a big scale, and you're, you're a small startup here. Uh, you have a grant from the state of California, um, but you can't afford to do a massive thing. So you're gonna have to partner with somebody, right? That's right. That's kind of where the top 10 big pharmaceutical companies come into play. They have the deep pockets. They don't necessarily have the means of innovating themselves, but when it comes time for us to spend millions and millions of dollars <laughs> on clinical trials, we'll partner with one of them. So we're actually sitting in the space. We're not in your labs. We're sitting in the space. This is Stanford's uh, Accelerator, Stanford University's Accelerator. And you were, your company was the first medical company to go through this program here. That's right, so um, we're sitting in StartX, which is an accelerator program for Stanford students. Um, and typically, S StartX sees a lot of IT companies come in, um, both in the consumer space and enterprise space. And so our company is one of the first. These are dot com companies, These are right? dot com yes. companies. <laughs> um, and so we were the first, one of the first biotech companies to come through the program. Um, and we saw kind of right off the bat how different it is to start a medical company than an IT company where you know, really all you need is a table and a computer, whereas we needed lab space, um, had to deal with regulatory issues such as the FDA, um, and it's just a very, very different experience. But you've now, you personally have gone on to start within StartX a sort of subsidiary X program called? StartX Med, right, which is um, very tailored towards medical entrepreneurs. So we support digital health companies, biotech companies, medical devices, kind of the entire gamut, and the mission is really to help support these medical entrepreneurs by creating a collaborative environment where they can really talk about their successes and failures and use kind of this community and crowdsourcing method of advancing their own companies. So stem cells are one of those things that everybody's been hearing about for, for a while now, over a decade. It's, I mean, it, but it sounds like this magical miracle. We can grow anything, right? Um, how far away are we from, from seeing actual, in your opinion, um, seeing actual products being delivered to consumers that are based on stem cells? I think we're really close. Um, one of the problems, or one of the reasons why stem cells haven't been as widely adopted so far is because there were some ethical concerns um, regarding the use of embryonic stem cells. But now that we have technologies such as stem cell theragnostics where we can literally create these stem cells out of your skin cells, out of your fat cells, we completely I bypass... I don't have any fat cells. <laughs> <laughs> we completely <laughs> bypass um, all the ethical concerns and stem cell theranostics product is already on the market. We already have customers and so I think we're going to see a huge influx of more amazing stem cell based technologies coming out. So you dropped out of Stanford. You were publishing uh, very high level academic papers and you started this company and you decided not to continue with school. Uh, what would, you, would you tell other people to go that route or what, 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 what was going through your head? I mean that's a big decision. You were at Stanford, you were doing great work and you made this decision. It was probably one of the hardest and easiest decisions I've ever had to make. Um, I always tell people that are kind of considering dropping out that if you have to consider it, it's probably not the best thing for you. I was at a point where our technology just was so promising and I was so passionate about it that nothing else kind of made sense to me. And 
um, it was very clear that this is what I wanted to do. So I think if you have that kind of burning passion where... You'll know it, you'll right? You'll know it. You'll know it, okay. That makes sense. Uh, we only have a minute left. Um, so if you can fast forward, and I know this is kind of an impossible task, but fast forward five years in your, your head, what are you doing? Is stem cell diagnostics still doing the same thing? Are you still working on cardiac issues or are, are you moved on to something else? Yeah, so I think in five years, of course, biotech moves very slowly, but um, I definitely imagine us being in clinical trials where we're actually testing our products in actual patients. And we have a vision of really expanding beyond just cardiac. We want to um, start creating brain cells and liver cells and kidney cells and really trying to see kind of what the full potential of, of stem cell technologies.